So, you know, Dolly, GPT-3, very cool, you know, making uh, uh, oil paintings of Mao and Jesus talking to each other. But um, why does this matter for national security? How is AI impacting the war in Ukraine? Mm. Um, well, I think it's worth acknowledging that obviously we're seeing tremendous advances in state of the art in terms of research labs. And you mentioned some of those, like in language models or these multimodal generative models. Uh, but there is a big time delay between implementation in industry. Uh, and that's true with military, just as it is in other industries. And in some ways, it's, it's almost longer in a military context because there's funding issues for governments, there's bureaucracy that gets in the way. Um, so I, I don't want to overstate the degree to which artificial intelligence or, or deep learning, you know, in particular, is being used in military operations today. There have been some you know, rumors, I guess I would say, some reports about image classifiers being used in the war in Ukraine by Russia and Ukraine. It's hard to know exactly what the ground truth is of those. Um, I think anyone that follows this technology knows that, you know, oftentimes there's a pretty big gap between kind of the, the hype about an AI system and then what it's actually doing. And I've sure. learned over the years to, you know, to be skeptical of initial claims. And that's true in the military space as well. Um, you know, probably the area that it is likely to have the biggest impact, and this is behind the scenes and hard to hear, or hard to see rather, is um, the type of intelligence support the U.S. military is doing to support Ukraine, where the U.S. government has said that it's supporting Ukraine through intelligence. They've been cagey about exactly what they're doing for obvious reasons. They don't want to be too deeply enmeshed in a conflict. But we know that the U.S. military's first deployment of image classifiers was almost five years ago now through Project Maven back in late 2017. And so uh, I do think it's safe to say that there's probably some areas in which AI is being used today to support intelligence operations in terms of analyzing satellite images and drone video feeds. Uh, but I wouldn't want to overstate how significant that is today. It's probably, to be honest, fairly marginal. Um, and talking to people on the inside in terms of uh, how the U.S. military is using AI to process intelligence. What I've heard is that, you know, a lot of these tools, uh, they are impressive from a technical standpoint, as is what they're able to do. But going that next step, in terms of really transforming your operations to then use this technology, that's kind of the game changer for any new technology. I, I think that's still a, a ways uh, down the road. Great. So let's fast forward to the great Taiwan war of 2028. Um, how does AI uh, impact the, uh, you know, force structure and the way the, the, the way conflict plays out? Sure. So over the next, say, six years or so, I think we're going to see increasing use of some of the AI tools that are fairly mature today. Natural language processing, um, you know, predictive algorithms for things like predictive maintenance. Certainly, uh, image classifiers uh, to do object detection and recognition for things like drone feeds and satellite images, probably a lot of uh, business process automation, um, things that you know, may not involve machine learning, but are simply automating tasks that humans are already doing, trying to speed them up. Um, that will enable militaries to do things like, for example, compress targeting cycles. So shorten the time it takes to get a piece of intelligence understand it, pass it over to, you know, those making decisions about targeting and then carry out some kind of attack, um, you know, maybe by several hours compressing that time cycle. Um, but I would still say that it's largely going to be on the next you know, five to 10 years, um, you know, very human centric process. Uh, we're a long ways from Skynet and from AI systems, you know, running warfare in a very significant way. Um, and some of that's going to be just the realities of military bureaucracies in, you know, in the United States, certainly in China, um, in terms of their ability to integrate these technologies and then change their operations. Great. So let's, uh, you know, let's do the 15 plus horizon. Um, you know, what's the, what's the sort of bull case for how impactful um, these technologies could end up being? Yeah. So I think one of the interesting questions is what happens when you have um, AI implemented across the space of militaries, the same way that we have you know, other general purpose technologies like electricity or you know, computers integrated today. Um, so over time, say in 15, 20 year time horizon, 
I do think it's quite possible that you see AI systems being used to more rapidly analyze information, fuse it, pass it to decision makers who need it, help them understand the battle space better. And then we'll see over time more intelligent, networked, autonomous, swarming munitions and platforms that can carry out operations, whether it's constant operations, logistics, or kinetic strikes against various targets. And all of that um, seems like it is likely to lead over time to a battle space that is more transparent, where it's harder to hide, uh, militaries of greater situational awareness of what's happening, um, and that is faster paced. So if you can think about the Industrial Revolution, have a whole set of technologies um, that that then transformed warfare over time of World War One and World War II and increased the physical scale of destructiveness in warfare, greater iron and steel and firepower. AI is likely to do similar things, but at the cognitive dimension of warfare, increasing the pace and tempo of military operations um, in ways that in the long term actually could be challenging for humans to deal with.